Why, hello again! Welcome to your weekly news roundup found only here at the Tokusatsu Network. I'm your host, Squall Charleston, and you're seeing this video now in its time slot that will appear each week, right here on Saturdays, or Fridays if you're a Metal Hero level on our Patreon. Olympusant Incorporated Toku Channel, formerly the Funimation Channel, gave English-speaking Ultra Series fans a cause for rejoice. Announced last Friday via Twitter, Toku Channel will begin airing Ultraman Max this month. The original show aired back in Japan back in July 2005 and was brought to Crunchyroll in October 2014 for the US, Canada, Latin America, UK, Australia, and New Zealand platforms. This Ultraman series has been well known among fans for paying homage to previous installments by including cameo appearances from old characters, updated versions of classic kaiju, and a return of the previously abandoned Monster of the Week formula. Uh, sounds kind of like Gokaiju copied Decade, which originally copied from Max. The Funimation channel was rebranded as Toku on December 31st, 2015, in an effort to reflect the shifting focus of the channel to include more live action programs. Ultraman Max is another example of how Toku is continuing with this strategy. The Toku channel is available in the United States via AT&T Uverse channel 1484 and on demand channels such as Xfinity or Optimum. Good news is hopefully on the horizon for our stateside giant lizard. Millie Bobby Brown has signed on to play an unspecified role in the 2019 Godzilla sequel. Netflix's last summer 80s inspired horror series Stranger Things took the world by storm and went on to become one of the most successful shows of 2016. Now one of the show's many stars has earned her role on the sequel to 2014's Godzilla. Millie Bobby Brown has become wildly known for her role as the character Eleven in Stranger Things. While we don't know what kind of plot Godzilla King of Monsters will be tackling, we do know that it is part of a larger series of giant monster movies. Officially dubbed the Monsterverse, Warner Brothers and Legendary's new Monsterverse series includes a newly rebooted King Kong movie series that kicks off with Kong Skull Island on March 10th this following month. Following the release of Godzilla, King of Monsters will be Godzilla vs. Kong in 2020. Millie Bobby Brown will be also returning to the small screen when Stranger Things Season 2 hits Netflix later this year. Well, the basement door to where Den-O has been kept since the late 2000s opens once again. The newest trailer for Cho's superhero Tyson showcases Kamen Rider Den-O. The popular 2007-2008 Den-O series celebrates its 10th anniversary this year, and Kamen Rider Den-O is prominently featured in the latest trailer for the upcoming Cho superhero Tyson film. The trailer features the iconic Taros Imagine, Momotaros, Utaros, and Kintaros with Toshihiko Seki, who voices Momo, narrating the trailer. The trailer also features a team consisting of Beat Buster, Ao Ninja, Kamen Rider X Aid, Kamen Rider Den O, and Kamen Rider Zolda. That's the weirdest team up I've seen in a long time. Cho Superhero Tyson marks the fifth edition in the Superhero Tyson film series, and over a hundred heroes are slated to appear in the film. Kamen Rider X Super Sentai, Cho Superhero Tyson releases March 25th nationwide in Japan. What else might lie down in that 10 year old basement you might be asking yourself? Well, if you're asking yourself about Blu-rays, you're absolutely correct because Deno is getting some anniversary releases. Each of the upcoming Blu-ray boxes will be priced at 19,800 Japanese yen and will be three disc sets. Each will have a section of the anime shorts with the Imagine, Junctions, unused footage collections, a 16 page booklet of production presentation collectibles. Blu-ray box one will be released May 10th and contains episodes one through 18. Boxes two and three will be released June 12th and September 13th. With Valentine's Day right around the corner, we all know where our extra money is going. Obviously into newly announced items of the week, yeah! Premium Bandai announced the release of the DX Game Scope, the stethoscope device from Kamen Rider X8. In x the doctors wear a specialized stethoscope that can digitally diagnose an infected game disease patient. Premium Bandai is giving fans of the series a whole new way to play doctor with the release of the DX Gamescope, a replica of the device. 
Using the large red joystick on the back, you can swap between various characters in the series. Each character has three different voice clips from the series, and additionally, the DX Game Scope will be able to project an image onto a surface, emulating the screen that appears when diagnosing a patient. Nice. The DX Game Scope will release in June and retail for 6,264 yen. Pre-orders have already begun and will conclude on February 28th. Bandai Candy have released the first series of the Kamen Rider X8 SG Rider Gashats. The first set of the Sound Rider Gashats contain the Mighty Action X, Tattle Quest, Gekiso Robots, and Shikaudiki Sports Gashats. Each Sound Rider Gashat retails for 500 yen at markets across Japan. While the SG Rider Gashats are in no way a replacement or alternative to the DX Rider Gashats, fans looking for a spare something to customize, you know, use as a cosplay prop, these are perfect for that. More SG Rider Gashat series will be released as the series progresses. Premium Bandai also announced the release of Kamen Rider Brave and Snipe in the fully revealed full action figure Saga series. The full action figure Saga series is an all new Bandai Candy series of highly posable scale action figures that feature an incredible amount of detail and action for a reasonable candy toy price. The first set is due to release in March and includes Kamen Rider X8, Gen, and Kamen Rider Kuga. To coincide with the release of X8 and Gem, Premium Bandai will be releasing a special two-pack containing Kamen Riders Brave and Snipe, titled the Full Action Figure Saga X8 Riders. The Saga X8 Riders set will release in May and retail for 5,184 yen. Pre-orders have already begun and will conclude at an unannounced date. If you enjoy bundle deals and packs of toys, wait, there's more! Premium Bandai also announced the release of Kamen Rider Kuga's three alternative forms in the newly revealed full action figure Saga series. To coincide with the release of Kuga Mighty Form, Premium Bandai will be releasing a special three pack containing Kamen Rider Kuga Dragon Form, Pegasus Form, and Titan Form titled Full Action Figures Saga Kuga Riders. The Saga Kuga Riders set will release in June and retail for 5,832 yen. Pre-orders have already begun and will conclude at an unannounced date. Candy, candy, candy. Oh, thankfully we don't have another article about another candy toy, but we do have some cool new trailers and features this week. A video from Katokawa Pictures features new footage from the upcoming Hurricane Polymar film, as well as interviews with action director Koichi Sakamoto and lead actor Takashi Yoroi. Sakamoto is well known for his stunt direction in many other Tokusatsu productions, including Kamen Rider Double and Forze. Hurricane Polymar is set to release as a nationwide roadshow event on Saturday, May 13th, ooh, right before my birthday, celebrating the 55th anniversary of Tatsunoko Productions. A second trailer for the Ultraman Orb movie came out this week as well. The longer trailer shows off new monsters and heroes in the movie. In March, Ultraman Orb the movie, Lend Me the Power of Your Bonds, will hit Japanese theaters. And finally, this weekend on Toku, the Juotras fight through adversity against their greatest enemy, Shinjinus, in the final episode of Dobutsu Sentai Juotra, The Earth is Our Home. That's why I got my Juo red jacket on just for the occasion. And a burger-themed bugster appears that might not be as such a bad virus after all in episode 17 of Kamen Rider X8, an uncommon burgester. Uh, <laughs> they saw their opportunity and I'm very glad that they took it. His name is Burgermon? Oh, that's adorable. Oh. I want to first say thank you to all the submissions for our community corner that we have received so far. It's been awesome to look into all the impressive work everyone is doing, and narrowing it down each week will be a challenge. But we love everything that's been sent to us so far, and we will be getting around to showcasing it when we can. This week, we were presented a very unique comic that is created by some very talented and toku-friendly people. You'll know as soon as you see it. Xeno Guardian Red Visor Go is an upcoming comic that will be distributed both online and in print. It follows the story of a 16-year-old Catalina and her brother Alex. At a young age, the two would watch Xeno Guardians, a low-budget teen action superhero show similar to Sentai or Power Rangers. While at a convention, they happen to meet the actor who portrayed the leader from the show, who turns out to be nothing like the caring and charismatic character on TV. And after an altercation, Catalina happens upon a pair of sunglasses that transform her into the title hero from the show. We're joined today actually with Alejandro, the creator of the comic. 
Hi, my name is Alejandro Rivera. I am the artist and co-writer of Xeno Guardian Redvisor Go. So tell us, what makes Xeno Guardian unique? So one of the important keys to this comic book is nostalgia. I think nostalgia is a very powerful tool. Um, it's something that you can tell has definitely been really prevalent in pop culture in the last few years. Uh, just think of how many reboots, remakes, that sort of thing that you've seen. Um, and it plays on like, you know, who we were when we were kids, you know, remember that first moment that you watched Power Rangers or your favorite superhero and how they inspired you to be a person. Most comic book stories about superheroes involve someone who inadvertently gets superpowers and just happens to decide that they want to be a superhero. And this story, the main character grew up watching, you know, Xeno Guardians, which is this cheap, low budget superhero action team show. And they grew up in this world where those heroes don't exist. And it's a dark world. You know, you grow up and you realize this, it's not as happy as it seems to be. But the show was an escapism for our main character. Main characters, actually. It was a tool of escapism. And when they get their powers, it, it's basically powered by their nostalgia, their happy memories. And that becomes a weapon that they actually are able to manifest and save the day. And it's told from that perspective of... This is someone who always wanted that power, and they always wondered why they didn't have that power. Then suddenly, they get that power, and they become the hero. You know, in a way, why would Spider-Man want to become a superhero? We never showed time before. Whereas, and this is a story where this is someone who desired to be. I mean, who didn't want to be Superman as a kid? And that's kind of where I'm coming from this story. So, I hear that you guys also have a GoFundMe page. Yeah, so our GoFundMe is a really unique way to be able to pre-order our comic book. Uh, in there, you can get our comic book, t-shirts. I even have a, an action figure that's being made. We have a tentative release date of having this either out by April or May. All of the artwork has been finished. We're currently getting it lettered, and we're already plotting out issue number two. Uh, so we're really excited to bring this to you. You can go uh, visit our GoFundMe. There's even a five-page preview of the comic on there. I would love to be able to hang out with you guys again. Well, thank you very much for your time. We'll have that link down below so you can check out Xeno Guardian Red Visor Go and all the other stories we've covered in today's video. And also, if you don't already know, the Tokusatsu Network has officially launched our Patreon with a bunch of levels and rewards to give back to you, the loyal and lovable readers and viewers. This has been your weekly roundup for all things Toku related for the first week of February 2017. For more information on any of the stories in the video, head over to the Tokusatsu Network for the full articles or click below on any of the links. For more weekly roundup videos like this, be sure to like the video and subscribe right here to the Tokusatsu Network. George has been a weird series. It's got very high points and it has very low points. And I don't know, I'm excited to see how they wrap it up because they have been doing a lot of good uh, wrap ups for some of their smaller side stories, which I've been happy with so far. But oh man, next week, Q Ranger. Woo, Q Ranger. Ah. Oh.